One thing you'll notice in my shop is that the walls are pretty bare. One reason for that is that I've always kept most of my small tools as well as my screws and nails in a small room just outside my garage. Needless to say, it's super annoying to have to run out and grab a screw every time I need one. So today I'm going to build a simple wall cabinet in this little nook here that will store all of my fasteners and hardware. So the plywood shelves were completely bare at my local home center, but I managed to pick up a few quarter sheets of 3 quarter inch plywood that I'll use to build the carcass. I made all the cuts on the table saw following the dimensions in the plans I drew up. If you're interested in building this storage cabinet, you'll find a link to the plans in the description below. With my sides and shelves cut, it's time to make some dados. First for the shelves, which will help give the cabinet more rigidity, and second for the sliding doors. Here I'm marking the dados on each part just so I don't get mixed up and make a mistake. Now I could cut these dados using my router and a homemade fence, but I do have this very nice router table that I made a few years ago and that I really don't use often enough. I'll use a half inch straight bit to make the dados for the doors since the doors will be made of half inch plywood. Plywood is always a bit undersized so the door should slide nicely. I set the fence to half an inch from the bit, then set the bit height to about an eighth of an inch and made a first pass. I could then raise the bit to a quarter inch and make a second pass. It helps to trail with a scrap piece of plywood to prevent tear out at the back of the panel. Just make sure to hold it down until the router comes to a full stop. Now the secret to sliding doors is that the groove at the top of the cabinet has to be deeper so you can pop the doors in. So for the top panel I raised the bit once again and made the dado a little deeper. I could then move the fence back a bit and repeat the process for the second set of dados for the sliding doors. Ok, I'm sure that was all a bit confusing, so let me recap. Here I've got the bottom and the top panels with two parallel dados, the top ones being deeper than the bottom ones. Again, this is so you'll be able to slide the doors in. Over here we've got the left and right panels with the dados being offset, just like the doors will be. At this point, just to be safe, I checked that a half inch piece of plywood would fit to make sure my doors would actually work. Now to help them slide smoothly, I sanded the inside edges using sandpaper wrapped around a thin piece of wood and also broke all the edges. Ok, time to move on to making the dados for the shelves. This time I'm going to use a 3 quarter inch straight bit. I lined up both sides and marked where the dados would go. Now I'll need to clamp down a guide for my router and here's a little trick to figure out where to clamp it. On a scrap piece, trace a line and clamp a guide on that line, then use your router to cut the dado. Now you can measure the distance between the dado and the line and use that measurement to offset your guide. So with that figured out, I clamped my guide down and cut the dados making two shallow passes, which makes it easier on the router and the bit and also helps prevent burning and tear out. As you can see, I made sure to stop and turn off the router just short of the edge so I wouldn't blow through. With that done, I could move on to assembly, but I noticed that my plywood edges are all different in pattern and color, so I decided to add some quick iron-on edge banding to hide the front edges of the cabinet. This is super easy to apply using an old iron cranked up to the highest setting. Just take it slow, but keep the iron moving until the glue melts and sticks the banding on. After the piece has cooled off, I like to use this edge trimmer to trim the sides. I'll leave a link to this tool in the description below. Just squeeze and pull along the edge and voila! Then I just snap off the edge and clean it up with some sandpaper. I ran the sandpaper along the edges too, and when I'm done, this will look like a solid piece of wood. Ok, now the shelves have dados, but the top and bottom will be assembled using pocket screws. I grabbed my pocket hole jig and quickly made a few pocket holes in both panels. Alright, it's time for assembly. I applied some glue to the dados and propped up the shelves, edge banding facing front, so I could pop them into the slots and then added some clamps. After that, the top and bottom get secured with some pocket screws. I then checked for square, which is especially important for this cabinet since it doesn't have a back to square it up. So while that's drying, I'll get to work on the French cleat I'll use to hang the cabinet on the wall. It's essentially a strip of plywood, that's the full width of the cabinet, that I'll rip in two on a 45 degree angle. I'll secure one half to the top of the cabinet using some glue, pocket screws and brad nails, and save the other piece to hang on the wall later. As I mentioned before, I'm using half inch ply for the doors. I thought about using quarter inch, but plywood tends to bow when it's too thin, so I think half an inch is a safer bet. 
I use my track saw to break down the sheets into manageable pieces and finish cutting the doors to size on my table saw. The doors need some sort of recess to use as a handle. Now you could just make a hole here, but I have a thing for red hardware in my shop and I found the perfect little finger pulls for a few bucks and figured why not. All right, moment of truth. If I did my math right, these should fit perfectly. I just need to insert the top first, push it all the way up, swing the door in and lower it into its trap. The door should also slide into the dados in the side panels and this will hide any gaps or mistakes if your cabinet isn't perfectly square. You can also add paste wax to help the door slide a little better, but for now everything looks good so I'll leave it as is. Okay, let's get this thing mounted to the wall, yeah? Okay, so I've got the other half of the cleat here and I've pre-drilled three holes. I'll just roughly transfer the center marking onto the wall. Now since I'm mounting to cinder block, I decided to go with Tapcon screws, so I'm using the drill bit that comes in the package. I'm going a quarter inch deeper than the screws will go and making sure to clean out all the dust from the hole. I swear this is not what it looks like. I'll secure the first screws and level it so I can then drill the other holes next. Like I said, you gotta clear away all that dust. Looking solid, so it's time to get this cabinet on the wall. Of course, it's awkward and heavy, and in a second I'm going to bang my head on the garage door railing, but it's all worth it in the end once the cleat does its thing and the cabinet's hanging solid on the wall. Yeah, it feels good. I can now pop in the doors just as before. To get myself organized, I headed over to Princess Auto and picked up a bunch of storage boxes. They have all sorts of shapes and sizes to choose from. And then, well, I got organized. I can't tell you how amazing it feels to have all my screws and nails organized and easily accessible all in one place. I even sorted my dowels and biscuits, washers, and pretty much every single fastener that I have. Oh, and yes, I labeled them all. And you know what? It's so incredibly satisfying. Don't forget to check out the plans below if you're interested. And until next time, thanks for watching. See you soon.